Selamun Aleyküm. Yok sağ ol Doğan. İnşallah. Just don't share your screen. Just I will stop my share, and and then you can share your slides. Okay.
Dear doctor, I can't hear you. Yeah, now? Yeah. It's okay, I can't hear now. Okay. okay. Uh, I will introduce at first uh, for Dr. Enor uh, from Turkey, one of the best uh, who speak about the scoliosis updates. Uh, he is a consultant in clinical medicine and rehab. The topic today and uh, this amazing episodes will be a great, I'm sure, of updates of scoliosis assessment and rehabilitation. Uh, so now uh, the screen with you, Dr. Enor, okay? Okay. Assalamu okay, alaikum, uh, Dr. Uh, Najm Eldin El Ragab. Thank you uh, for your kind invitation to this webinar, which is organized by the Egyptian Neurohabitation and Electroneuromyography Association. Uh, welcome uh, to our scoliosis webinar. Uh, today, our topic is updates of scoliosis assessment and rehabilitation. My name is Aynur Metin Terzi Başoğlu. I am a physiatrist working in Health Science University, Gazi Osman Pasha Training and Research Hospital from Turkey. Uh, as you see in this slide, uh, uh, like you, nature... You can zoom your slides. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we can go yeah. on. Very good. As you see in this slide, like nature, our spine also has its own seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter time. We must take care of our spines because they say that once true age is determined by the health of the spine. When the spine is healthy, the whole body radiates health. Now you can see two images here. The one on the right side is one, my own patient's back view. As it is written in her back, everything will be okay in the end. If it is not okay, it is not the end. After this entrance, I want to begin our webinar. In our webinar plan, we will define scoliosis, we will classify scoliosis, we will do the assessment of scoliosis. After then, we will learn the treatment approach and discuss what we learned. Let's begin with the definition of scoliosis. The term scoliosis is derived from Greek word scolio, meaning any band or twist. Galen, who is Greek physician, writer, and philosopher from Bergamo, Turkey, defined it as abnormal curve in coronal plane. So we can say scoliosis is a lateral curvature of the spine. It comprises a heterogeneous group of conditions consisting in changes in the shape and position of the spine, thorax, and trunk. Scoliosis Research Society defined it as a complex three-dimensional deformity of the spine characterized by a lateral deviation of at least 10 degrees in coronal plane with the rotation of the vertebra and usually associated with reduction of normal kyphotic character of the spine. Please look at this one. Normal uh, reduction of normal kyphotic character is very important. We all see deformities in three planes, sagittal plane, coronal plane, and transverse, transverse plane of the body. Scoliosis, three deformity of spine. In coronal plane, we see lateral deviation of at least 10 degrees. In transverse plane, we see vertebral rotation. In sagittal plane, we see hypokyphosis and low doses, anterior and posterior tilt, and rotation of pelvis. As we update the I update our knowledge in scoliosis. Now uh, they added the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is the growth period of the patient. In vertebral plane, we see some changes. What are these? In transverse plane, stru structural changes in vertebrate plates. In coronal plane, lateral concave angulation we see. In sagittal plane, we see dorsal angulation. In structural changes in scoliotic spine, 
we see a number of vertebral segments settle in extension, spine deviates laterally, and it rotates axially to the deviated side. In transverse plane, when vertebra turns right, it means it is right scoliosis. Otherwise, other, we can say that in right scoliosis, vertebra turns clockwise. In left scoliosis, vertebra turns in left side. In this slide, you see the coronal and sagittal plane together in a scoliosis patients. You see where there are bending sites, we see hypokipotic patients in sagittal plane. From three deviation to three D vertebral deformation, we see some uh, changes and they call it in the pathophysiology, visual circle. What is visual circle? We can explain the pathophysiology of scoliosis with this circle. This happens continuously and we call it visual circle. In vertebra and disc, Beijing happens. After then, vertebra deviation occurs, stress increases, asymmetric cost constraints, and asymmetric growth happens. Then, vertebral and disc beijing happens. This goes continuously, and then you see the vicious bone circle in structural form. Stage one to stage six, deviation, more asymmetric loading, asymmetrical growth, waging of the vertebra, disc waging, and you see at the end structural scoliosis. At the end, what we see as a result of these vicious circles, scoliosis becomes a physical, aesthetic, and psychological public health problem. Now, you see, a, you can see that scoliosis is a real problem. In the result of this study, you can see that mean time to follow up is four and a half years. When you, when a patient comes to your clinic, uh, mean time of follow up is four and a half years. Mean time that patients were raised is 3.1 years. And also, mean time in a brace was uh, uh, for patients that were bracing before surgery, mean time in a brace is 1.8 years. You can see that it's a long time for the patient, also for the physiatrist or physiotherapist or orthotists. Uh, I will share with you some uh, SOSORT recommendation. SOSORT is an international society on scoliosis, orthopedic, and rehabilitation treatment. They recommend some uh, requirements for doctors, physiotherapists, orthotists, or working in this field. Their recommendation one, they say, medical doctor is responsible for the treatment, as you see, and has to be experienced and should fulfill, should fulfill the, the, these requirements. What are these? They must be trained by a previous master for at least two years. For, they must be at least two years of continuous practice in scoliosis bracing. Prescription of at least one brace per working week in the last two years. And evaluation of at least four scoliosis patients per working in the last two years. As you see, it is not a game. It is a real problem and we must, we must work together. And in recommendation two, they uh, say some things for the, for the orthotist. They must be experienced and fulfill these requirements. Working continuously with a master MD for at least two years, at least two years of continuous practice in scoliosis bracing and construction of at least two braces per working week in last two years. I don't know whether you have uh, orthotis uh, like this, but 
in Turkey, we have difficulties in finding these authorities. We are trying to educate them and we are trying to work together with the authorities and physiotherapists. As a result, we can say that this is a team approach with the patient, with the physical therapist, with the authorities, with the doctor, and this is a teamwork, this is a transdisciplinary teamwork. Let's come to etiologies of scoliosis. Lots of etiological scoliosis you can find in books. Uh, we can say congenital, structural, neuromuscular, syndromic, idiopathic, or secondary. There are lots of classifications. One of them is uh, etiological, one of them is uh, according to the age. One of them is according to the magnitude of covangel, location of apex, structural, structural change, or the side of curvature. Now we can learn the age classification of scoliosis, which we use more. We use age classification of scoliosis. We divide scoliosis, early onset scoliosis, and late onset scoliosis. Scoliosis, which onset is before 10 years old, we call is early onset. Scoliosis, which is after 10 years old, we call is late onset. Early onset is also divided into two groups, infantile and juvenile. Late onset is adolescent, adult, and senile scoliosis. You can see a table now. It is a classification of early onset scoliosis. Development and initial validation of the classification of early onset scoliosis is done in uh, 2014 years. Now you can see the age, etiology, major curve angle, kyphosis, and uh, progression ratios. According to this, you can see that uh, early onset scoliosis also um, is classified, classified according to the etiology. You can see congenital structural, neuromuscular, syndromic, and idiopathic. Let's talk some of them. Congenital scoliosis, it is a spinal deformity caused by vertebra that are not properly formed occurs in the first six weeks of embryonic formation, rarely inherited, often diagnosed in infants and toddlers period, but may not be discovered until adolescence or adulthood. Often skeletal maturation, it is anticipated that most mild congenital scoliotic curves will not progress or be associated with back pain in adulthood. You can find more in SRS and org website in uh, website. Now you can see some congenital deformities, segmentation defects, formation defects. You must find block vertebra, lateral bar, lateral bar or hemi vertebra. In defects formation, you must find hemi vertebra, wedge vertebra or others to say congenital scoliosis. You must see in X-ray one of these segmentation or formation defects. These are some examples of neuromuscular and syndromic scoliosis. Cerebral palsy, spinal muscular atrophy, pediatric spinal cord injury due to these are neuromuscular, myopathic, connective tissue disorders, syndromic are the other ones. Let's come to idiopathic scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis is the largest group of scoliosis. Uh, that makes up 75 to 80% of cases. This group is idiopathic scoliosis group. In this group, the reason is unknown. It is, the one, it is defined radiographically as a lateral curvature of the spine greater than or equal to 10 degrees with rotation of unknown etiology after all other causes have been ruled out. Scoliosis taught as a sign of a multifactorial syndrome. It is very important knowledge because there can be lots of unknown sites to discover for idiopathic scoliosis. Also in idiopathic scoliosis, we classify early onset and late onset. 
there are some specialties for early or late onset. Late onset scoliosis have a high progression risk and associated with rapid growth. In early onset scoliosis, pulmonary dysfunction may be seen. Uh, greater than 35 degree COP angle hey, high, has high progression risk. We have defined these idiopathic types, infantile idiopathic scoliosis, juvenile idiopathic scoliosis, adolescent and adult. Infantile idiopathic scoliosis. They are diagnosed between birth and two years. One percent of all idiopathic scoliosis cases. 60% are males. There are some etiological theories, intrauterine molding, lack of prone positioning in infancy, or etc. Curves greater than 30 degrees has a risk of progression. You can find more from the website. Juvenile idiopathic scoliosis diagnosed between three and nine, 10 to 15% of all idiopathic scoliotic cases. 20% of curves greater than 20 have underlying spinal conditions like anoxiary malformation, malformation or Schilling's deformity. Younger curves and older curves has different specialties. For example, uh, boys are more than girls. Left-sided thoracolumbar curves are in younger curves. Girls are more than boys. Right-sided thoracolumbar curves are more in, on, in older curves. Risk of progression is in the patients which uh, curve is greater than 30 degrees. Treatment includes bracing, casting, traction, and surgery. 95% of will need surgical treatment at some point in time. You can find more in the site. Now we can come to adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is the largest group. It is diagnosed between 10 to 4. Most common type of scoliosis, two to three in 100 adolescents. Seven to eight, one uh, female, uh, female to male ratio is seven, eight. There are some etiological theories, hormonal imbalance, asymmetric growth in spinal growth plates, muscle imbalance, and genetic. 30% percentage have positive family history. That in some patients, the risk of progression are curves greater than 25 degree in patients who are skeletally immature, we mean risks are zero, has risk of progression. Curves greater than 45 in patients who are still growing has risk of progression. Curves greater than 50 in patients who are skeletally much major has risk of progression. 50 degrees is, the, is very important. Uh, in Turkey, we had a study of prevalence study. Uh, I also included in this study, our prevalence in Turkey is 2.3 per percentage. Female, male ratio is 1.3. In progressive severe curvatures, female, male ratio is 7, 8, or 1. In Turkey, we have 100,000 patients, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis patient in Turkey. In, according to the SOSORT 2016 guidelines, they classify the idiopathic scoliosis into three groups according to chronological age, angular, angular degree, and topographic degree. We have already discussed the uh, according to the age. Uh, according to the COP degrees, we can say low up to 20, moderate 21, 35, moderate to severe 36 to 40, severe 41 to 50, severe to very severe 51 to 55 very severe, 56 or more. We also classify the idiopathic scoliosis according to the apex. If the apex is, is from C1 to disc C6 to 7, 
we call this scoliosis cervical scoliosis. If the apex is between C7 to T1, we call it cervicothoracic. If it is between disc T1 to T2, to this T11 to T12, it is thoracic. If apex is between T12 to L1, it is thoracolumbar. If it is between disc L1 to 2 to L4, it is lumbar. We define according to the coronal plane. According to the apex, we name it. If convexity is on the right side, we call this right scoliosis. If convexity is on the left side, we call is it left scoliosis. Apex is the convexity side. In Scoliosis Research Society, you can find its own glossary. Three-dimensional terminology of spinal deformity, glossary of spinal deformity, biomechanical terms, revised glossary of terms. Every pay, everyone who is uh, interested with scoliosis must know this terminology to talk each other in the same language. You can find it from website of SRAs. List of terms you can see, all of them. Uh, you can find apical vertebra, end vertebra, cobangal, neutral vertebra, major curve, minor curve, and others. You can find central sacral vertical line, plumb line, sagittal vertical axis, copangle, and others. We can discuss these if you want in the next lecture. Let's come to assessment of scoliosis. Assessment of scoliosis is very important. Uh, first visit and follow-up visits has its own specialties. Uh, we assess them in standing assessment and forward bending assessments. The reason of consulting the doctor is the aesthetic deformity, body asymmetry, body image anxiety, neck, back and headache, strain in back muscles of lower extremity, structural change and strain in the ligament, muscle sand intravertebral tissues, muscle imbalance and neofacial pain. Stability problems in agonist and antagonist muscles, vascular, pulmonary, blood pressure, sleeping disorders, and fatigue problems. Balance problems, falling, and psychosocial problems. The most uh, reason they come to me is someone else to notice. They say, my friends noticed it, or my uh, teacher noticed my uh, scoliosis. You usually, they have no pain in first decade. Assessment of scoliosis has three parts, clinical assessment, radiological assessment, and aesthetic assessment. After these assessments, we give a name to the scoliosis. For example, you have right thoracal 30 adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, or you have left thoracolumbar 25 congenital scoliosis. We must name it and then we must uh, treat it. Before naming it, you can treat it. In clinical assessment, age, gender, family, maturation status, etiologic evaluation, physical examination, Adam's test are evaluated. In radiologic assessment, Covangel measurement, maturation evaluation, Lenke, King, BSPTC, Schrott, and Schrott classification are evaluated. In aesthetic assessment, uh, firstly, we use trays. I will tell it later. Main objectives of clinical assessments is early diagnosis. Assessment of progression potential, we must find the progression potential. 
to define early and appropriate conservative management, that prevent progression and surgery. Improving the aesthetic and appearance and avoiding future health risk. We must standardize the clinical assessment. It is the most important view. First step of clinical assessment is to take the history of the patient. Since the follow-up for idiopathic scoliosis continues until the growth is complete, the purpose of the first examination is different from the controls. The purpose of the first examination is to exclude possible causes of secondary scoliosis. Establishing the first contact with the patient and family is a decisive factor for compliance and success of treatment. If you not contact with your patient, the treatment will not be successful as you want. The, con uh, the connection is very important with the patient. The purpose is different in every examination. In first examination, family history is important. Disease status is important. Presence of scoliosis in family, parents' family, gen genetic and familial disease are questioned. Diagnosis and prognosis determination is important. To exclude possible causes of secondary scoliosis, you must ask all of them. Now, you can see mother and a daughter's x-rays. This mother is my uh, friend from university. Uh, she has a right lumbar scoliosis. Her daughter came to me, our clinic. She has also lumbar, but she has left lumbar scoliosis. Psychological history. You uh, physiological history. You you ask pregnancy history, complication, any complication in pregnancy, any illness in pregnancy, maternal exposure to the risk factors, birth history, normal spontan vaginal way or cesarean, psychomotor development, it control, sitting, walking or talking. Is there any pathology in this period you must learn. Gynecological, gynecological history. We must ask puberty symptoms and menarche age. It is important for remaining growth and development of scoliosis. They think that no risk of progression two years after menarche. I uh, put a question uh, here uh, because uh, it is not uh, the fact. Sometimes we can see after two years menage, the children goes on growing. Because of this, uh, it can be changeable. Past pathological history, neurological signs and symptoms, previous seizure, mental retardation, pain in the spine, surgical intervention, thoracic surgery, like esophageal atresia, cardiac surgery, trauma, possible antalgic scoliosis for possible antalgic scoliosis must be evaluated and asked to the patient. Now let's come to the current pathological history. First, cognition of scoliosis. How, who, when, and does he or she take a treatment? And discontinuation of the treatment must be asked. Once destination is never a place, but a new way of seeing things, Harry Miller has said, our way is so long. As we said before, we follow them four and a half years. We must learn how does it begin, who do you recognize, when, when, if the patient take a treatment. In follow-up visits, it is a little bit different. Uh, we uh, we ask for the compliance with the treatment. We ask the sport activities. We ask the exercises. We ask for the brace. We ask the other problems. For sport, we ask what kind of sport does the patient do? How many days a week does he or she do? Exercise regular or not? What kind of? 
does the patient do the exercises in group alone, personal trainer, with personal trainer, with physiotherapist or a family? How many days a week does the patient do? Duration of session, observing the self-correction via mirror or videos. We ask all of them and record them. For braids, is the recommended brace wearing time complied? Brace time. Is there any problem? Stinging, numbness, pressure source, or other problems? Can she or he wear it properly and correctly? We ask them. Is it as tight as needed? Are the holes of the brace in the right place? Does it allow movement? The way of answering questions, communication with their families. We all uh, observe these situations because if the patient uh, doesn't uh, like you, he or she goes out and discontinue the treatment. You must uh, observe the way of answering questions, communication with their families. Let's come to physical assessment. We need some tools and a record notebook. Our tools are a clamp or laser, bonus colimeter, wooden blocks of different thickness, weight scale, height measuring instrument, ruler, tape measure, posture chart, or mirror. Clinical assessment begins with observation, comprehensive monitoring of patient and aesthetic image, tenor stage evaluating secondary sex maturation, assessment of leg length difference. It is the first step for rule out the secondary reasons. Coronal and sagittal assessment, ATR and gibbous height measure measurement, assessment of stiffness of the curvature, Deambulation, balance and neuromotor control assessment, assessment of signal flexibility and muscle retraction. When he or she first enters the examination room, it starts with walking until prone otherwise all scoliosis are told to be idiopathic because 75 to 8% of scoliosis are idiopathic. Significant deficits are observed in the ambulation, speaking, and undressing. We observe skin lesions, scaphoid lesions, axillary freckling, neurofibromatosis, neurofibromatosis, hair page along the spine, hemangioma, sinuses, general morphology with long fingers, thumb or wrist sign, maybe Marfan syndrome, limb height difference, cow's foot, cloth too, Pesipinavirus or other things. We must observe all of them. We take photos for the observation from anterior, posterior, posterior and lateral side. We must classify the skeletal maturity. How we classify the skeletal maturity? With tenor states, menstrual cycle, research sign, through radiat cartilage, olecranon, wrist and hand ossification. Uh, now you see a, a growth period, for example, in pubertal, 15% uh, of adult age is gained. In childhood, 40% 14 of adult age is gained. In infantile, 15% of adult age is gained. Uh, you see the pubertal uh, duration is very important. And it begins in females uh, approximately 10 years old and males in 12 or 13 years old. Uh, we must be careful in 10 and 12 years old. Uh, tenor stage is, a, uh, is um, skeletal maturity. We find the skeletal maturity. Uh, braced and pubic hair uh, we see. Uh, girls grow fast until the first menage and then growth slows. Growth continues 18 months or two years following the menage, they say. Uh, now you see a diagram in a table. Uh, this is very important because uh, at the beginning of the puberty is here and uh, in research tree, uh, you see the growth uh, lasts, lasts. Uh, 
first mens is, is in uh, Rissar 1, uh, nearly in Rissar 1. Uh, after first mens, uh, two third of the two third of the growth is lasted. This period is so important for us. In research sign in coronal plane, X-ray of the pelvis, the state of ossification of the iliac apophysis used to denote the degree of skeletal maturity. It is uh, scaled from zero to five. Zero means no evidence of ossification of the apophysis. Five means fusion of the apophysis to the iliac crest. You can see here, one, two, three, four. In Rissar one to one, zero to one, growth support occurs. Uh, nearly Rissar one, first menses occurs. In Rissar four and five, growing stops. This is very important for us because we use braces in Rissar zero, one, maybe two to three, not four and five. If a patient comes to us in research four or five, there is no need for bracing because growing stops, uh, it's too late for the patient. We must catch the patient from research four and five. This is the incidence of progression factor. It is calculated according to the Cobangle, research sign, and chronological age. With Cobangle, research sign, and chronological age, we find the progression factor. After finding progression, we draw a line and we uh, calculate the incidence of progression and uh, with this diagram, we uh, choose our treatment. For example, for example, if you find progression factor 1.6, we draw a line here. We must do intensive rehabilitation, we can see. If it is 1.4, we can do physiotherapy or observation. It's a quick look for us. Uh, through radiant cartilage, open or uh, closed. It is uh, it is important for nature. You can see the radiate cartilage cartilage closure. Uh, it is uh, in the period of Rissar zero. You see, after Rissar one, it is already closed. Uh, the um, age is uh, approximately in uh, twelve and thirteen in girls. 13 and 15 in boys to radiate cart cartilage closure. We must uh, catch the patients in this period because of this. You can see a diagram in research according to the research and ages. For example, uh, in uh, 6.5 years, um, his or uh, her angle is 24. In 11 years, uh, it is 20 and 13, 18. In 11 years, it grows. 13 years, grows more. In 14.5 uh, years, uh, has a surgery, as you know. We must, if we could check this, uh, catch this patient in 11 years or 11 years, I mean, uh, it could not be go to surgery. Uh, our role is very important before 13 and 15 years old. Body aesthetic evaluation. How do we uh, evaluate body aesthetic? With body asymmetric scales, photographing, and topographic viewing. With enough clothing, how do we do? With enough clothing to show undress or body contours, with a posture, posture mirror or custom format posture chart using a lazar if possible from all directions with photographing, recording, etc. By the asymmetric scales, we use trunk aesthetic clinical evaluation, the most one, posterior trunk symmetry index and anterior trunk symmetry index are all in academic reasons. We look for the body aesthetic evaluation. 
uh, in three scale, uh, we uh, we look at the patient from dorsal side. We look for waist asymmetry, hemithorax asymmetry, scapula asymmetry, and shoulder asymmetry. And uh, it is considered as the main goal of conservative treatment by social experts. Ex experts. We uh, evaluated in the first visit and then the follow-up visits we uh, look uh, if it is improved or not. You, as you see, in the next visit, the trace is improved. POTC and ATC index are for academic reasons. We must take photos in coronal, sagittal, and transverse planes, or in all the visits, front and back, transverse photographic, photographic course for follow-up visits, and topographic viewing. It's a new and developing technology. In the future, we will use it more, I think. We must uh, assess the late length discrepancy. In the growing age, the extremities grow at different rates. First, extremities grow, then spine grows. The minor leg length difference is examined, less than one centimeter. Leg length is measured by standing by placing thumbs on CS, CPS, and Crystalliax. It is compared with the radiography measurements. Real and false leg length discrepancy in spine must be measured. And now we came to Adam's forward bending test. It is uh, very important for scoliosis patients because it is simple and uh, you can use it in everywhere. How much would you want in Adam's forward test to lean forever? You want them uh, hips and shoulders maybe in the same transverse positions. Uh, we use balance coliometer to use uh, to calculate angle of truncal rotation ATR. We use ATR angle of truncal rotation. It means monitorizing the progression of deformity. There is a correlation between increased ATR and decreased mobility of thoracic curve. Correlation between ATR and hop angle, there is a correlation. If the ATR is larger than seven, you, will, you can now request the scoliosis radiograph. Before this, please don't want X-ray because X-ray is harmful for, for the patient. Uh, because it causes some def some uh, cancers or other uh, bad things to the patient. Uh, you must calculate the ATR and then uh, you will uh, want the scoliosis graphy or not. Uh, what is the ATR? Let's uh, define it. With the trunk flex to the horizontal, the angle between the horizontal and the plane across the back at the greatest elevation of a rib prominence or lumbar prominence is measured by an inclometer or scoliometer. Gibbous head scoliometer is placed parallel to the ground at the apex point where it is highest. The distance between the body and the scoliometer is measured with a ruler, as well as the distance of the apex from the spinous processes. It can be evaluated together, ATI and gibbous head, at the same time. Measurement of the angle of the whole body rotation, we can see with ATR. High correlation with vertebral rotation. ATR, 8 degrees, uh, means shows 20 degrees and above in uh, X-ray. Uh, Interrator and inter inter uh, reliability is uh, 2 degrees and 3 degrees in ATR uh, evaluation. Rigidity of the curvature, important for prognosis and treatment option. The patient is asked to lean to the side and then to the other side while leaning forward. In the meantime, if the curvature is not rigid or structural, the gibbous decreases. If the gibbous remains the same, the curvature is rigid. Same angle, same ATR, same age, patient, different rigidity, different result. Rigidity is important for the prognosis and treatment option. Let's come to coronal plane assessment. We assess the coronal plane, lateral decompensation. 
the plumb line is placed in the middle of the medial sacral line. Its C7 alignment, its distance from the midline, its C7 level, C7 level is recorded. It's an important predictor for the risk of progression in adult. Lateral decompensation is also important in follow-ups for because it is a predictor for the success of brace treatment. We evaluate the brace treatment according to the lateral decompensation. decompensation. Now we will assess the sagittal plane. The distance of the plumb to the C7, T12, and A3 spinous processes are measured. You can measure with laser or dissolve the arcometer. You measure the sagittal from C7, T12, A3, and C1. Sagittal index is C7 plus L3. If it is lower than 95 millimeters, it, is, it has a low risk for hypertrophosis. We can say hyperkyphosis. You must measure the sagittal profile with a laser or the solder arcometer. Also, there's a tool for sagittal measurements. It is named Inclimet. Uh, sagittal view and coronal view has its own specialties. From sagittal view, why is it important? It's, it, it's important because it is an important determinant of pain risk in adulthood. And it is important for poor, poor quality of life cause. Coronal view, why it is important? It, it, is, it, it is determinant for the risk of progression in adulthood, not associated with pain. Pain is associated with sagittal view. From now on, we discuss the coronal views, scoliosis, lateral bendings, but scoliosis is not associated really with pain. Sagittal view deformities are associated with pain. You must look flexibility and mobility of the patient in different sides. We must do functional tests by leaning forward. All spinal segment mobility are controlled, it's controlled. Spine and pelvis range of motion are monitored. Control of the reduction of the curve is important. Weight transfer. Which side is the most body weight carried on the leg? Usually the side that carries the body weight is the side of the major curve. We can uh, evaluate this and we can do some um, opportunities for this. We must look for the hypermobility for scoliosis patients, weight and scoring, because studies show that girls with idiopathic scoliosis have a higher rate of hypermobility, should be taken into account when planning exercise. Weight and scoring is used most often, often positive criterion greater than five points in girls, greater than four points in boys. It, uh, it is important also for bracing. We must last do neurological examination, cranial nerve examination, muscle strength sensory examination, straight leg raising, deep tendon reflexes, clonus, babiski, abdominal reflexes, walking, standing, and balance, Romberg test, Fukuda test, or others. Uh, after uh, physical examination, we must assess the quality of life. To monitor the treatments, we use SRS22. SRS I don't know if you have in Egypt or not. We use early onset scoliosis questionnaires 24. We use Betso Barnham's test questionnaire for braids. Also, there are lots of different questionnaires. I wrote it here, but we don't usually use them, the others. Uh, SRS22 is a widely accepted scale developed by the Scoliosis Research Society to assess the health-related quality of life of patients in the United States. The reliability and validity study of the Turkish version of the scale was conducted by Alnay et al. in 2005. It has subgroups. We evaluate pain, we evaluate self-image, function, mental health, and satisfaction and dissatisfaction with management. 
In EOS Q24, we evaluate general health, pain discomfort, respiratory functions, hormone ability, bodily functions, daily life, fatigue, energy level, emotional state, impact on parents, financial effects, and satisfaction. Uh, for braids, we use Betsobernheim stress questionnaire. It's, uh, it's here. In general health assessment, we use SF36. Natural course of scoliosis, um, that no increased mortality in adult and adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Health, high cope angle has breathing problems, rarely hypertension, no neurological problem. Deformity, greater than 30 degrees, has a progression of 0, 0 0.73 per year. Single torical lumbar curvature has progression, its progression is greater. Quality of life, function normal, mental health normal, back pain, body image problem. They have back pain and body image problem. Curative course. Curative progression increases with the development of skeletal maturity. High angle curvature that starts at an early age is progressive. Trunk imbalance affects progression. Thoracic kyphosis loss is important in progression. Poor indicators for progression. Right lumbar prognosis worse than left lumbar. Deep L5 and greater than 33. If the lumbar angle is increased. If hypercosis is present, if the abical vertebral rotation is more than 30 percent, double measure curvature and lumbar cop angle greater than 20, high angle at first diagnosis, presence of reduced spinal mobility has poor indicators for progression. Adelson idiopathic scoliosis treatment goes according to the SOSORT consensus report. They need to uh, improve aesthetic, quality of life, disability, back pain, physiologic well-being, progression in adult period, pulmonary functions, cobangle, other therapeutic needs in adult period. Let's come to treatment approach. We can uh, have a little time, but I can, I can go on. Uh, observation, exercise, brace, and surgery. Treatment efforts are based on the risk of progression. Uh, they can be one by one or they can be together. Uh, risk of progression is evaluated according to the curve type, progression factor, curve magnitude, age at diagnosis, and skeletal maturity at diagnosis. Observation curves lower than 20 to 25 who are still growing, curves lower than 650 in patients who have completed their growth. We must observe these patients. Curves that measure between 20 and 25 and 40 during their growth phase. Goal is to maintain current curve magnitude and prevent progression. I wrote here 20 and 25 because it differs according to the uh, sex maturity, according to the research. We uh, decide, decide according to the uh, research stage, uh, 20 and 25. Patient bears until research four or five, two years after the menstrual period, we write here. But um, if uh, the patient goes on growing, you measure the height and uh, you must measure the height, uh, you can go on bracing. But if the growing stops, you can stop the brace. Curve progression to 45, at the end of growth is considered successful and no surgery is recommended. There are uh, types of braces, night braces, full-time braces, uh, greater than 18 hours, we call it full-time, we have night braces, uh, Boston or custom-made braces, you can find uh, soft brace, rigid brace, ultra-rigid brace, and night brace. We can uh, discuss them later in um, future, uh, maybe. Uh, surgery. Curves 45, why is still growing? Curves uh, greater than 50, who are skeletal major needs surgery. Uh, our surgery goals are prevent curve progression, 
obtain some curve correction, balance the spine, frontal, sagittal, and coronal planes. What do we do in treatments? Fusely selected number of spinal segments into one bone, posterior spinal approach with rods and pedicles screws most common. Uh, society of scoliosis, orthopedic rehabilitation and treatment uh, uh, says that you must do scoliosis specific exercises. Uh, in 2005, so sort consensus on components of scoliotic specific exercises are autocorrection in three dimension, training in uh, daily living, active daily livings, uh, stabilizing the corrected posture and patient education. Act, uh, all schools report to use three-dimensional active correction to treat scoliosis deformity. A true three-dimensional three corrections in the sagittal, frontal, and transversal plane done simultaneously. Sosort uses the term physiotherapy scoliosis specific exercise in connection with all of the schools represented within the organization. The differences between the schools relate to the specific exercise used by each school. Now you can see the schools for scoliosis specific exercise. There are seven schools. Leon from France, Katerina Schrott Asclepios approach from Germany, Scientific exercise approach to scoliosis from Italy, Barcelona scoliosis physical therapy school approach from Spain. I am also BSPTC therapist. Dopomet approach from Poland, Sachif approach from the United Kingdom, functional individual therapy of scoliosis approach from Poland. Now you can see some three dimensional autocorrection in standing. Uh, in lying prone 3D autocorrection, autocorrection with rotational angular breathing. Uh, we use this breathing, it is uh, the most important part of the exercise. Uh, activities of daily living is very important. We must train the uh, patients in activities of daily living. Patient education using it, we must use a spine model. We must show, they must see their spines uh, clearly. Uh, what are the messages to take home? Uh, it is, uh, I think one hour finished. Scoliosis diagnosis must be uh, detailed. Classification must be detailed. Follow-up is a long and transdisciplinary disease. It should be diagnosed by the physiatrist and conservative treatment should be planned. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, I, I can uh, show you uh, a, an uncontrolled boy. This is a three years follow up. You can see in uh, 2016, it is not uh, my patient. They uh, asked me. Uh, he came uh, in 2016 to the patient firstly. Uh, after then, uh, he doesn't follow up their visits. And in 2019, you can see the scoliosis on uh, left, uh, right side. Uh, you can use SRS and SOSOR sites. You can find more, uh, more than me from these sites. This is my clinic and my physiotherapists, my girls. And uh, thank you for your interest. This is my team and uh, in Turkey prevalence study from uh, Turkey prevalence study. Excuse me for my <laughs> pronunciation, but uh, I hope uh, you are happy. Okay, I, I, I think now I can, I can see you did it. A very, very interesting talk, uh, this episode. Very comprehensive, very specific. We, uh, I, I, I think you start from the basics to, or to the advanced. Uh, you cover all the aspects of the scoliosis. Um, yes. I'm sorry, so I'm, I'm away from this topic, but I, I learned it today a lot. From you, dear Dr. Anor, I, I, 
I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful for your talk. I think this uh, talk, it will be physics and advance for anyone need to further research, uh, especially in all perspectives of the uh, uh, orthopedist, uh, uh, doctor of physical therapy, physiatrist, all the disciplines that uh, interact with this uh, scoliosis. But uh, let me clear, uh, I, I think some hits, uh, I, I think you are so tired uh, after this, uh, the suits, uh, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, first, in Egypt, we, are, we have in uh, Faculty of Physical Therapy, Cairo University, a lot of sections in physical therapy subspecialities, uh, such as physical therapists for musculoskeletal, physical therapy for cardiopulmonary rehab, physical therapy for uh, surgery, uh, physical therapy for uh, uh, uh, women health, uh, physical therapy for post burn physical therapy for pain. Uh, I, I, I, there is a, a, a significant revolution in this field. So we have some issue about uh, uh, uh, the scoliosis uh, have uh, a problem in the somatosensory pathway, in the somatosensory pathway that me can uh, uh, get some uh, hair problem, vision, visual inactivity in some cases. Uh, this is one hint. Uh, again, uh, I think it's some uh, use of uh, surface EMG biofeedback in the rehab sections, which is a very good uh, outcome. Uh, but uh, my questions, uh, when uh, do a cope angle uh, the X-ray you request it from standing or from subai? No, it must be standing position uh, from uh, C1 to uh, you must see the head of the femur because you must see the radiate cartilage. Okay, uh, and it must the duration of the uh, X-ray is very important for harmful effects. You right. must uh, take X-ray when you want. Uh, we use a scoliometer. If it gives uh, uh, greater than uh, seven degrees, after then we take uh, X-rays. And uh, posterior anterior and lateral together. Yeah. Okay. You know the, the matter of this, this scoliosis is three dimensional. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. The rotational issue is very, very, very important. True. So, yeah, yeah. So any advance in orthotics to deal with this, the orthosis nowadays in the advance of dealing with the scoliosis. Yes. Any scoliotic, any orthotic, sorry, uh, um, uh, adjustment for the three day correction or just we dealing with the two days? Yeah, you get it? Uh, excuse me, I couldn't understand the question. We have two, two types of orthosis, Milwaukee and Boston. They are symmetric orthosis, yeah. symmetric orthosis. Yeah. Now, we don't use that symmetric orthosis. We use a symmetric orthosis with the rotation. We make holes to break uh, the other braces are not used uh, now yes. in so sort uh, uh, guidelines uh, because uh, they correct the spine in three dimension. Okay, we must derotate the spine in vertebral vertebral plane because of this. The uh, making orthosis is an art because they must be certificated. If we use the Milwaukee or Boston brace, or we can use now, because if we don't have uh, asymmetric braces, we have to use them because uh, we, have, we must make a barrier for the spine because it progresses. If you, uh, if you don't do something in adolescent period, it grows. If you don't have asymmetric braces, you must uh, make a barrier for with Milwaukee or 
uh, Boston base. Okay. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the, the big dilemma which uh, we can face the neuromuscular type of scoliosis, which oh. comes with yeah, spinal muscle atrophy, which, which is a very, it may enhance the life threatening issue. So, what about uh, you in Turkey to deal with mm -hmm. this type of uh, scoliosis? Mm -hmm. In neuromuscular scoliosis, uh, the aim of uh, us is uh, far to correction. We must support the patient. Because of the neuromuscular dysfunctions, uh, the patient goes down. We must take them to up. Because of this reason, we use supporting braces, not correction braces, because we must, uh, internal organs, you know, we must uh, think the heart, the lungs, the, uh, the other organs uh, of the patients. Uh, for example, uh, neuromuscular scoliosis in infantile period or uh, juvenile period, we make casting, you know, casting uh, with orthopedics. Because if we don't cast them, uh, it grows uh, faster than idiopathic scoliosis. The lung must uh, grow and improve. Uh, in the past, they, uh, the, they, uh, the surgeons make them, uh, make them or offer them surgery, but now they are waiting till the uh, age of uh, five or six for the lungs. If they have operation before six or five years old, they have lung problems, okay? A lung is very important for child in the adulthood uh, because of this, uh, we must study with orthopedic surgeons and uh, we, we can make casting or supporting uh, braces for, the, for these patients. Neuromuscular scoliosis is a very different and difficult subject. Uh, there are also some braces for them uh, they are uh, a little bit thinner, not thick, thinner, and support them where the uh, alignment is there, where the apex, they uh, support them. And we must um, tell the patient's family activities of daily living. We must teach them how to sit, how to lie down, uh, how, to, uh, how to do in daily livings, uh, we must help them. Yeah, uh, to totally agree. Uh, it's, it's, it's this uh, what I uh, I need to focus on. I think uh, in the end of this amazing talk, uh, let me clarify some uh, home messages. I think the scoliotic patients need not for rehab centers only, but I think need some modifications at home, at schools. Yes. At either the bags, at either the recreational area, I think yes. it must to to globally to to to to to, to modify uh, anything that may harm or increase the uh, uh, the angle of this scoliotic uh, patients. Yes. Yes. Uh, you agree yes. with me? Yes. yes. Uh, okay. Uh, at the end, I I I have to uh, to thank you, dear uh, uh, dear friend, Dr. Anor. I hope to visit Egypt soon after the crisis of COVID uh, finished. I hope soon, I hope. Uh, so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this amazing one hour for a uh, grateful uh, I really thank you. And uh, I can invite you to uh, my hometown to Istanbul and you can visit us every time. Uh, uh, but I think we must wait COVID. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank, you. thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you.